let's solve problem number 2 on space complexity of recursive algorithms. Here is the problem. What is the space complexity of the following algorithm? This is the algorithm written in C-like syntax. Our job is to find the space complexity of this algorithm. We learned already how to find the space complexity of recursive algorithms and we have solved a problem based on it as well. Therefore, I want you to try this problem on your own. So pause this video for now and try solving this problem and then I will provide my solution. So pause this video. I hope you tried solving this problem. Now let me provide my solution. The solution to this problem is simple. We want to find the space complexity and we learned in our previous lectures that in order to find the space complexity, we need to know two things. One is the space required for the complex data structure if we are using any data structure. And second is the depth of recursion. In this algorithm, we are not using any complex data structure like arrays or maybe linked lists. We are using this variable n, which is a simple variable, and it will not contribute much to the space complexity. It will take just constant amount of space. So, there is no complex data structure involved in this algorithm. Hence, space complexity totally depends on the depth of recursion. And what is depth of recursion? Depth of recursion is same as depth of function calls. This means we want to know the flow of function calls for this algorithm. We can see this is the recursive algorithm. And in order to find the space complexity of this recursive algorithm, we need to know the depth of recursion of this algorithm. We can observe that fn is calling itself within its own body. Here we are calling f of square root of n. Now let's find out the space complexity by finding out the depth of recursion of this algorithm. We can find the depth of recursion in a generalized way. Instead of taking some value of n, we can start from f of n and we can proceed gradually. We can take the generalized approach. This means we do not have to provide any value of n in order to know the flow of function calls. So let's start from f of n. We know f of n is the first function call. And now let's assume that n is neither less than 10 nor it is equal to 10. This assumption is important because we do not want to stop here and say that we are done with the algorithm. We want to know the flow of function calls. And for this, it is important to assume that n is neither less than or equal to 10. This means the base case is not satisfied and hence the else block will be executed. Now in the else block we have return f of square root of n plus 1. As we are interested in the flow of function calls, we do not have to worry about the additions, subtractions and other operations. We are only interested in the function calls. From f of n, we are calling f of square root of n. This is what we should concern about. So, it is clear, from f of n, we now need to shift our attention to f of square root of n, or we can say f of n power 1 by 2, because square root of n can be written as n power 1 by 2. Now, what happens after this? Let us assume that the base case is still not satisfied for this value of n, which is square root of n, and hence the else block will be executed, which means the recursive case will be executed. And here we have return f of square root of n plus 1. Again, we are calling f of square root of n. But this time n will be replaced by square root of n. This means we now need to take square root of square root of n. So the control shifts from f of square root of n to f of square root of square root of n which is equivalent to f of n power 1 by 2 square. Now we can observe a pattern here. Here we have n power 1 by 2 power 0. Then we have n power 1 by 2 power 1. Then we have n power 1 by 2 power 2. If we proceed like this, we will end up at, let's say, f of n 
power 1 by 2 power k. So I'm assuming this is the last function call and n power 1 by 2 power k is equal to 10. So the base case is satisfied for this specific function and that's why this is the last function call. And this is my assumption that n power 1 by 2 power k is equal to 10. It can be less than 10 also. For n less than 10, the condition will satisfy as well. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm assuming n power 1 by 2 power k is equal to 10. This will simplify the calculations and will help us in finding the space complexity in much easier way. So now we know this is the last function call and n power 1 by 2 power k is equal to 10. Now, my question is what is the depth of this recursion? Here we can observe that the function calls are going in a linear fashion. From f of n, we have f of n power 1 by 2, then we have f of n power 1 by 2 square. It is not the case that from f of n we are calling two or more functions, we are calling just one function. So the progress is linear and hence the depth of recursion must be equal to the number of function calls. This is what we already learned in our previous presentation where we discussed the problem 1 on finding the space complexity of recursive algorithms. What do you think how many function calls are there? The first function call is f of n or we can say f of n power 1 by 2 power 0. So the power of 2 is 0 for the first function call. The power of 2 is 1 for the second function call. The power of 2 is 2 for the third function call. Similarly, for the k plus 1th function call, we have n power 1 by 2 power k. As we have k here, this must be k plus 1th function call. So there are a total of k plus 1 function calls. And hence the depth of recursion must be k plus 1. So, depth of this recursion is k plus 1. But we want the depth to be represented in terms of n because n is the size of the input and space complexity should be represented with size of the input. So now let's find the value of k and we can find this easily from the last function call. Here we have f of n power 1 by 2 power k and we assumed that n power 1 by 2 power k is equal to 10 because this is the last function call and we want that the base case should be satisfied. So let us assume that n power 1 by 2 power k is equal to 10. Now we can find the value of k in terms of n from this equation. Let's find out. In order to bring k to the base, we need to apply log on both sides. Here we have the constant 10, so we can take log base 10 on both sides. So now let's apply log base 10 on both sides. After applying, we will get log n power 1 by 2 power k base 10 in the LHS and log 10 base 10 in the RHS. Here we have log n power 1 by 2 power k base 10. We know the property of logarithm log a power b base c is equal to b times log a base c. So, this becomes 1 by 2 power k times log n base 10. Now, we have 1 by 2 power k times log n base 10 from the property of logarithm. Here we have log 10 base 10 which becomes 1 because log a base a is 1. So now we have 1 by 2 power k log n base 10 equal to 1. We can multiply both sides by 2 power k to remove 2 power k from the denominator. So in the LHS we will get log n base 10 and in the RHS we will get 2 power k. So log n base 10 is equal to 2 power k. Still we can observe that k is in the power of 2. k is not in the base. To bring k to the base, we need to take log again on both sides. So now, let's apply log base 2 on both sides of this equation. Because here we have the constant 2, we can apply log base 2 on both sides. 
after applying log base 2 on both sides we will get log n base 10 log base 2 in the lhs and log 2 power k base 2 in the rhs here we have log 2 power k base 2 we can apply the property of logarithm log a power b base c which is equal to b times log a base c so we will get k times log 2 base 2 and log 2 base 2 is equal to 1 so we will get k times 1 in the rhs and here we have log n base 10 log base 2 so k is equal to log n base 10 log base 2 now we can replace k by this value and this is the depth of this recursion log n base 10 log base 2 plus 1 so we got the depth of recursion of this algorithm and this means the space complexity is big o of log log n i'm writing big o because this is the worst case space complexity in the worst case situation this specific algorithm will take log log n space and what's the best case complexity if n is equal to 10 or if it is less than 10 then in that case this function will be called once hence there will be constant amount of space just one entry in the stack space so the best case space complexity will be omega of 1 but we are interested in the worst case complexity hence i have written here big o of log log n so with this we are done with this problem and this means we are done with this topic okay friends this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.